It's a buzzword! Okay, so here's how this video is gonna go. Firstly, we're gonna talk about buzzwords, and what they are, and why AI probably is a buzzword. And then after that, we're gonna talk about the thing behind the buzzword. The initial core technology, the core principle, that got all the scientists really excited, and why you should be excited about it as well. And once all of that has been achieved, you will know what AI is. It's a marketing term as opposed to a technical term. It's one that doesn't so much carry weight and meaning and semantics as it does make you excited and interested in what's going on. And luckily there's a lot of research on buzzwords and if you like long paragraphs, there's a very good long paragraph. I'm more of the kind of person who likes examples. So here are some other examples of buzzwords. Hyperautomation, digital immune system, multi-experience. And the thing that all these buzzwords have in common and that I think also applies to AI very much is that they have an obscure technical meaning that's like not super apparent. And whenever you use the word, you seem kind of smart. The word almost acts like a status symbol, you know, sort of the verbal linguistic equivalent of having a nice fancy hat and a Gucci car. Another thing about buzzwords is they become less effective over time. If in 2002 you used the word Web2, people would think you're a genius. But if you talk about Web 2.0 now, they, they won't look at you like you're a genius. And here's a nice graph, because we all like nice graphs, at least I like nice graphs. This is kind of how buzzwords work over time. And probably my favorite quote about buzzwords comes from this guy, Rustam Roy, who was an eminent material scientist in America. And he was talking about how if you want to get funding for your science project, you pick a word that the funder, the person, the decision maker who has the ability to hand over the cash doesn't understand. And you just keep using that word. And essentially what you do is you imbue this word because they don't understand it and you do and you keep saying it and it sounds cool. You imbue it with this like magical, mystical power, which then makes them hand over money. That's pretty much exactly how AI is being used at the moment. There was this excellent study by MMC um, where they found that there was a whole bunch of AI startups that were like, you know, we're AI startups. And the nice thing about AI startups, as you can see in that graph, is that they tend to, they tend to get more money than software startups. You know, if you put AI in it, then, you know, you'll get more funding. Maybe that's because they're better companies. You know, maybe AI is just such a strong technology that the companies are just better and, and it's evident that they're better and that's why they're getting more funding. I think it probably has something to do with the, the hype, personally. But anyway, so there's like this strong incentive for people to use this AI word because it's, it's got this mystical power around it. And they also found that 40% of these companies didn't have any evidence that they were actually using AI or they couldn't, you know, the people conducting the study couldn't find the evidence that these companies were using AI in any way. Often what you'll get is this thing where you've got a company that's like, yeah, we're an AI chatbot company, but actually they didn't build any, any kind of an artificial intelligence system themselves and they're just making calls to ChatGPT or some other machine learning system that someone else has built. And they're effectively like AI resellers. The point I'm trying to emphasize here is that the, the word itself has power. And because of that, there's an incentive for people to use the word, even in cases where it doesn't really make much sense to use, use the word and where you're straying very far from the original like technical meaning that the word once had. Um, a fun example of this is Oral-B's genius AI 10,000 toothbrush, which is in some way AI powered. Now, I don't know, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I have no idea. Apparently it tells you when you're not brushing good enough. Uh, they are sponsoring this video, so that's great. So like, at the point where you have an AI toothbrush, like, what does that word mean anymore? What are we talking about at this stage? We're certainly not talking about like the singularity here. Um, one final nice example, and I feel kind of bad because I've picked on these guys before. There's a whole video about me picking on these guys, but there's this company called Muba and they're like, hey, we, we do generative AI music. And you type in a little uh, thing and they'll generate you a little track. And their, their claim is like, hey, we're using AI to generate that music. But what actually happens is they have a whole list of tracks that like humans have made, that AI, AI have not touched at all. Just humans have made a whole bunch of different tracks. And then whenever you ask for something, 
they'll stitch those tracks together in kind of a random way and then give that back to you. And you know, at that point, you know, how, how much AI is involved in that process? You know, they, they, they probably use AI in the stitching together process to choose which ones to stitch together. But like, obviously the bulk of the work in that case is being done by humans. So, you know, technically, I guess maybe they can call themselves AI, maybe. Certainly if the toothbrush is AI, this is AI. But it also is a little bit misleading because it makes you think that the system is a lot smarter and more impressive than it actually is. And this is very common. Okay, so bottom line, nobody knows what AI means. Nobody does. It has become a marketing term. It is being diffused. Its meaning is being attached to random things that don't really have much relation to each other uh, by people who basically want to make some cash dollar money. So why am I making this video? <laughs> What's the point? What's actually happening in this case that we ought to pay attention to? Because definitely something's happening. If AI is just a marketing term, what is the real term? What's actually happening behind the curtain? The answer is this graph. This graph is probably my favorite graph that I've seen all year. And what it shows is that in about 2015, we started being able to make machines that could beat humans at things that only humans have been able to do. One way of phrasing this, of course, and it's the one that really, you know, piqued everyone's imagination, is that we're able to create machines that exhibit intelligent behavior. We're able to create these artificial intelligences. Now, of course, no one actually knows what intelligence is exactly, but we do know that humans, humans are definitely intelligent. So if you can build an artificial system that can do what humans do, then okay, you know, you've got something that is intelligent and artificial. You've fulfilled those two conditions. But this is the important thing, right? Through various kinds of technologies and, and different computer systems being plugged together in various ways, we're able to create things that act as if they're smart. And that's a big deal. That's something we've been trying to do for at least 70 years, 69, 68 years, something like that. Um, this is a very old proposal, and this is, at this point, we definitely know that they were trying to make artificial intelligence. This was in England. That's how old it was. It was in England, back when England was relevant, back in the days of, like, muskets and exporting tea. This graph is also really nice because it sort of shows the scale of this project. You know, people have been trying to get machines to act in intelligent ways for a very long time. They've tried a whole bunch of different things. None of it's worked, basically until now. And that's the really exciting thing. That's the reason people started talking about AI again um, recently and why it had so much credit to begin with because suddenly we're able to start making these things you know, reasonably cheaply and deploying them out in the world. I do wanna stress that there's a lot of different kinds of technology that are being used to build AI systems, but one of the very key foundational building blocks for most of this technology, although not all of it, is something called an artificial neural network. So once you understand the basic parameters of an artificial neural network, that'll bring you a long way towards understanding, you know, what is AI and what isn't AI and what kind of things will work with AI and what kind of things like won't work with AI. Okay, so what do we take away from all this? That graph. Look at this graph. That graph is the thing, burn that into your mind. It's a trend of researchers and people in industry being able to build machines that act like they're clever and doing it in like a really effective and cheap way. Now, I'm gonna, for the first time in, the, in this channel, I'm gonna spruik something. So this is a course. This is a course that I'm teaching <laughs> about AI for non-coders. And it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be sick. It only costs like $120, so that's like so much benefits. For $120 you get PSYCH! It's free! It's literally 100% free, so it's gonna be a fun time. The course is geared towards people who want to do things with AI, but are not technical. So there won't be any coding, you won't have to know any prior knowledge at all to understand this course. And the idea is that by the end of it, you'll be able to understand what you can do with AI and what you can't do. So that when a consultant approaches you and tells you about their new AI toothbrush 
or bloody, I don't know, lint cleaner, <laughs> you'll be able to tell them to get lost. Or, you know, even better, you can have your own idea and be able to assess, you know, will this idea actually work? Is this feasible using AI or not? Take, take the course! Do it! Sign up now! Why am I making money signs? It's literally free! <laughs> I'm, I'm making money signs because of how much money you're about to make once you take this course.